Today on Gun Tech Nation, uh, we've got Tom Kubinek with Secure It Tactical, Secure It Gun Storage. I'm Ryan Gresham, and this, this is Gun Talk Nation. This Gun Talk Nation is brought to you by Silencer Central, Fiocchi Ammunition, Primary Weapons Systems, Range Ready Studios, FN Firearms, Guns and Gear, and Remington Ammunition. All right, welcome into Gun Talk Nation. Today on Gun Talk Nation, uh, we've got Tom Kubinek with Secure It Tactical, Secure It Gun Storage. Uh, goes by a few different names, or I guess in my head it's a few different names. Tom, welcome in. Well, thank you very much. Excited to, uh, to be on the show. I, we had you come on the show because there's there's some stuff breaking about uh, there's, there's some conversation about gun safes and gun storage kind of on social media and in the news. Hell, I saw a story on Newsweek this morning about this. So um, but just to set the stage, give people a, a quick background about you and and secure it. Um, secure it. We got our start around 2001 and we got into building military armories. Um, we, uh, it was something that I was intrigued by. We pursued it. I started Secure It Tactical in 2008. I designed and patented what is now, you know, Secure It Tactical Weapon Storage Platform, which we designed working with USAFIC, U.S. Army Special Forces Command, patent in 2008. By 2011, we were the primary supplier to the U.S. military for arms storage and uh, armory design. Today, you know, Secure It's the global leader in military weapon storage. It's a small niche market. In 2015, we went into consumer products really out of frustration with what the safe industry was, was offering. And as of today, um, our consumer products is probably 85% of the company. Oh, wow. um, it's just, it's grown tremendously. We're still, our core focus is to the warfighter and to making sure these guys have what they need to defend this nation and when and basically operate safely, quickly, smoothly and get their job done. But the biggest part of our company is consumer. We bring you know, 22, 23 years of military experience into everything we make for the consumer market. And we adhere to the same principles, the same controls, the same rules, the things that we need to deal with to sell to the military. Our, you know, our specifications, there's no variance. Our tolerance, what we say we do, we have to stay with. Yeah. Same thing holds true for the consumer world. You know, my 12 gun safe holds 12 guns. You know, it's okay. not a four, four gun safe that maybe it'll fit 16 in. It's yeah. Everything extremely. You guys have the, rigid. you guys have the gun lockers, or at least I call it gun, like they're kind of like a locker system. You've got the small handgun vaults. You've got the more traditional like gun safes. Um, but you know, when it comes to like building out armories for military and law enforcement, it's organization and it's uh, secure storage, but Okay, so we let's just kind of jump in. That gives a, a little bit of a background about you guys, and you've been at it for a good amount of time. Um, so this week, and we've uh, we've worked with Liberty Safe. This is this is the story, right? We've worked with Liberty Safe in the past, maybe not in the in the recent couple of years, but um, I mean, Gun Talk Media. We work with with most companies in the gun industry, and so <laughs> sometimes companies in our industry step on their feet and uh <laughs> and uh, a lot of times that's because somebody is running things that's perhaps not in our world of of gun culture and sometimes it's someone who's just out of touch so i'm gonna just in people in case people were just unaware of what happened we're gonna talk about this tom but i'm gonna read this statement that came out on social media from liberty safe two days ago um, real quick, it says this is from Liberty Safe. On August 30th, 2023, Liberty Safe was contacted by the FBI requesting the access code to the safe of an individual for whom they had a warrant to search their property. Our company protocol is to provide access codes to law enforcement if a warrant grants them access to a property. After receiving the request, we received proof of the valid warrant, and only then did we provide them with an access code. Liberty Safe had no knowledge of any of the details surrounding the investigation at the time. Liberty Safe, okay, here we go. Liberty Safe is devoted to protecting the personal property and Second Amendment rights of our customers and has repeatedly denied requests for access codes. 
without a warrant in the past, we do not give out combinations without proper legal documentation being provided by authorities. We regularly update our policies to ensure both compliance with federal and state law and reasonable consumer privacy protections within the law. First and foremost, Liberty Safe is committed to preserving our customers' rights and we will remain unwavering in those values. All right, so Tom, that one, that I'm just reading this one um, on their Facebook page, which typically companies post the same posts on all of their different social platforms. So, But this particular post has about 6,000 comments, almost 2,400 shares. So it's, it's a post that is uh, you know, spreading like wildfire. And basically, the summary of all of the comments are, screw you, you traitors, why did you do this? Why do you keep codes? So we couldn't get them on, and we thought, well, let's go to Tom, because you're a, you're a gun guy, you're, you own a gun-safe company. I mean, what's your take? You know, the, 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 they put themselves in this position by keeping codes in the first place. And secure, we've never kept a code. Again, I'm designing a military armory. A big system, maybe for the Marine Corps. If I build in a backdoor access for me, I'd be arrested. I mean, yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean that's that's the reality. That's the reality of our world. When we went in the consumer space, and we do use Securum locks in some of our products, the same lock that Liberty uses on a few of our safes. We're in the process of actually designing our own proprietary lock and replacing that. But Securum came to us. Hey, here's the locks. Here's boom. These are user code. And here's the master code. You can keep that. So if your customer loses, you know, you can you can get access to the safe and all this stuff. And my me, my number two in the company, my head of ops, we all looked at each other. I'm like, I don't want that liability. Frank's like, I don't want to do that. And my ops guy's like, I don't want to build a database. And we're like, no, give it to the customer. We just in a matter of like 15 seconds said, we're not going to store this stuff. Yeah. It didn't I mean, make right on the surface of it, you, you know, you kind of go, yeah. wait a minute, but we're going to have all the codes to all of our customer safes. That sounds just weird all, on the surface of it. You know, I don't think that these guys were thinking the safe companies were thinking that way. I think they were thinking, this is great. We'll maintain a high level of security. If there's a significant problem, and the customer forgets their combination, they don't have to destroy the safe. Well, the, you know, the spotlight's on Liberty. However, when you read into some of the other gun safe companies, they may all be doing it. I don't know. I know that a lot of other companies are doing it because they talk about it in their websites. And the shocking vacuum of information out of the gun safe industry about this, we're the only company that immediately put out a statement. I've put out several videos, A, stating my position, and then stating my disappointment with Liberty statements in the past, and now what's coming, well, now what's happened, but the rest of the industry is so quiet. Yeah. My only well, and that's view, immediately what people think, right? Is like, whether they own yeah. a Liberty or whether they own a different gun safe, they start going, well, wait a minute. Do, does, you know, whoever, does Secure It, does Canon, yes. does Browning, do they all keep these codes? Well, I, I can confirm that my, the ones I looked at did. I'm not going to go into names. Do your own research, but they do. So, um, I mean, and Tom, just to kind of go back yeah. a second, you were talking about the actual lock mechanism. That's yeah. a that's a common part that a lot of you guys use. It's a, comp a separate yeah. company. You don't obviously right. make your own locks. We, um, we do for some of our products, and we are making our own locks for everything going forward. But oh. we, have been using, we have been using a Securum lock in our answer line of safes since mm -hmm. we launched it. And that's one of the number one locks used across our industry. Now, recently, I mean, we've got posts. I just recorded a video where post, it's on our website today walking customers through how to factory, de how to factory default set your lock, which removes any manufacturer's code. And then you can redo the codes so you have the codes and nobody else does. It's actually not difficult to do. Is that a, is that a, would that be able, they are able to set their own code? Yeah. It just, if you, oh. it's a process you have to go through. It's a little bit involved, but what it does is it resets the lock, removes everything and goes back to, you know, user code one, 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 master yeah. code one, two, three, four, five, six. Boom. Now you have right. to reprogram those two codes. But if the manufacturer had some code in there, it's gone. Um, we also, we don't track serial numbers as secure it. And a lot of companies do that. We don't serialize our inventory. We don't serialize locks. They have serial numbers on them. We don't track it. So we have no idea who has what. They bought our product. It has a lock. 
And we give, when they buy a lock with a secure them, a secure them lock from us, we give them both codes and say, here, you know what? We trust that you know what you're doing. We're not, you know, we're not going to keep a backup code. So we, we just don't do it. Um, Tom, this is uh, after the break. I want to talk about Liberty actually came out with another post. Um, then we're going to, after the break, we're going to talk about what they said less than 24 hours later when the proverbial fertilize, fertilizer hit the ventilator. Primary Weapon Systems has a new line of suppressors, silencers, cans, and it's called the Bravo Delta Echo Series, the BDE, BDE 762 suppressor. They've got a 9, they've got a 22, they've got a full line. And I'll tell you a little backstory. They didn't just start making these. They actually brought in experienced suppressor engineers to develop the technology on this. 3D printed titanium, so it's lighter, it's stronger, and they can do some really neat things with the 3D printing. One of them is a design that looks cool on the surface, but it actually helps dissipate the mirage. It's also modular, so you can actually remove baffles, so you can change the length of it, shorten it up, and of course, the noise reduction rating would change with that as well. You can learn more at primaryweapons.com. Sig Sauer, you know the P365, it's America's number one selling handgun. The P365 high capacity micro compact, but they keep expanding the line. So now they have the P365 macro, which is actually a little bit bigger, holds more ammo in the gun. And then they have all these different variations, the P365 XL Spectre Comp. They have it in even different colors now. They have the, the TAC Ops, which has really been a hot one around here. Chris calls it a laser beam. So if you want to see what it's all about, what's the hype all about? The P365 from Sig Sauer and the whole family, go over to SigSauer.com. There's a new season of Guns and Gear on the air now. It's season 15. We had a ton of fun producing the show this year with a lot of cool products, and we did some fun demonstrations and, and tests. So if you'd like to see it, you can stream our content uh, on your iPhone or your Android with the Gun Talk app, or you can find it on Roku, you can find it on Apple TV, and then, you, of course, you can watch it on you know your good old-fashioned television set on the Outdoor Channel, and then starting in October, it'll be on the Sportsman Channel. So go check that out, the new season of Guns and Gear. Fiocchi USA, Fiocchi Ammunition. One of the things that they're doing is 5.7. The 5.7 by 28, it's a hot cartridge right now. It's been around for a little while, but a lot of new guns uh, chambering that particular cartridge. And they have some new loads for it. They have a 62 grain bullet, um, which is actually a subsonic load. And then they have a 40 grain going 1,700 feet per second. I'd love to see that in one of these little carbines. You can do some cool stuff with that. So go check them out, FiocchiUSA.com. So, Tom, just kind of following along, and I'm glad to hear you say, you know, you guys have your policy. And I think your initial reaction was what most of your customers would want anyway, right? You go, wait a minute, would, I wouldn't like that. So anyway, but Liberty, I kind of teased it before we went to break. Liberty said, ooh, this is bad. People are mad. We're going to put out a statement. And, you know, kind of following that whole like out of touch thing. And we'll, we'll also say this, Liberty is owned by a venture capital like investment group at this point. And they've, I think they've been bought and sold a few times over the years, over the last decade, actually. Um, they came out with kind of a, I think what a lot of people are calling a lame uh, response to this. You know, we, we love, we're dedicated to safeguarding the rights and privacy of our, of our customers. Um, I'm going to, it's a kind of a long statement. So I want to, I want to go to the part that I thought was kind of, I don't know, funny. Today we're announcing a change that empowers our customers with greater control over their information. Effective immediately, existing customers can visit a website and fill out a form to have records of their access codes expunged. In the coming weeks, we'll be releasing a feature that gives every new customer this option when, re when registering their safe. It's kind of a a Band-Aid on a, on a slash, right? I mean, well, congratulations. Now you get to fill out a form. Oh, great. It's worse than that. I want Think about the words you just read. New customers, and this is industry-wide. 
can opt out when you register your safe. Why the hell are you registering your safe? You don't register your guns. Mm -hmm. Why? I mean, everybody does this. Why, when you buy a gun safe, does the manufacturer want you to register your safe for your warranty? At right. security, you don't register your safe with us. You buy a safe. If we've got a safe that's down for a, manu for a manufacturer's issue, we fix it. Our warranty is, we've got a very solid warranty. We solve the problem. We don't look up, is he registered or not? Why are they asking us to register? I yeah, mean, I mean, I guess that's what, what, a lot of what is that database do. being used for? Yeah, and they register it for a warranty. But I mean, and I know, and you, you and I both know, sometimes the register thing is a little bit of a marketing thing. Like, okay, no, we're going to have it, a list of is, customers. It is, but in the firearms industry, if the if somebody came out and said, we want you to register your guns, well, they've tried that. It kind of blows up. But the safe industry says register your safes. I think that I'd like to you know, ask the whole industry to say, why are you doing this? If you offer a 15-year warranty or a lifetime warranty, does it matter who owns your safe? If the guy who bought the safe sold to somebody else, it's still your safe. If you say it's good for 20 years, damn it, take care of it. Yeah. It doesn't make sense to me that this whole registration, this whole, you know, anonymity in America is an amazing thing. It's part of our freedom. You have the right to remain who you are and to not share your information. And with Secure It, people place an order with us. Yes, we know we know the shipping address because we ship them a safe. But we don't, we're not asking for anything. We're not, we're not recording serial numbers. We're, we're not doing any of that stuff. It doesn't make sense to. Again, but the safe industry isn't run by people from the firearms industry or firearms background. You know, we yeah. incorporate in our marketing and what we do, how to defend your home, how to set your home like a fortress. We're trying to bring training into firearm storage because access training is as important as your draw from your holster. So yeah, I wanted to get into that. Tom. From different side. Yeah. I wanted to get into that because I spent a little time with you guys up at a media event up at the site yep. in Illinois, great training facility. And yeah, with some great trainers, fun. spent three days on the range and in shoot houses. And I thought it was an interesting uh, approach that you guys are taking as far as saying, OK, we're not just going to sell you a box that locks. Right. Well, this right. is actually a part of your kit, your defensive plan. And we want to talk about the proper way to use it, deploy it and train with it. So talk about this program that you guys are developing. It's 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 new. We're just coming out with it. And it basically it's there's a training gap within the firearms community. Almost all firearms training starts with the gun in your hand or in your holster. Yet when we're home, we typically don't carry a gun in our home. Right. Your gun is locked in. I mean, for me, fast access safes. So we want from basic firearms training to include access training. Because A, position one, if all guns in America were properly locked, a lot of accidents, a lot of tragedies would be avoided. Two, just because your gun is in a safe doesn't mean you can't have sub one, two second access to it. I can, you know, if I'm at my closet, I can have a handgun removed from my Fastbox 20 and be in a position, a high ready position. I'm just over a second because yeah, I practice. I, I mean, so I love, I love quick access safes, yeah. whether it's a long, and I, and I like that we have options for long gun safes that are quick access as well, um, or, or handgun. I mean, it, you yeah. kind of, you know, you, we all have known people, or maybe we've been those people that we stash guns all over yeah. the house. Cause you're like, you know, I have, I have a two level house or I have a, even a three level house with a basement. Um, and, and I want to have access in case something happens. Right. And I yeah. get that sentiment, but you know, there's, there's few times when that's the best idea, unless, I don't know, you're a completely single person, you know, live by yourself. Even then you could even make the argument that maybe that's not the, the, the most responsible course of action. But I mean, if you look, I, I have friends and as I've gotten older and my friends have gotten married and have kids and then I, I and the guys who are, are gun guys and gals, I got, I try to tell them like, Hey, just remember the, and I had to do it too. The way you used to keep your guns, oh, it's in a closet. It's in, it's up, it's on the top shelf. Oh, it's in a drawer. You can't do that anymore because the likelihood of, of having a home invasion and you have to defend yourself against three crack addicts 
is actually way lower than the risk of your 10 year old kid and his friend wandering around the house and getting a hold of something. That's a, that's a bigger risk. It, it is. And the other side of that though, is so people hide a gun up in a closet. Well, you know what? A gun in a fast access safe in your kitchen, in a kitchen drawer is far quicker to get to than a gun that's hidden in a closet. I mean, in truth, if you're really worried, I'm not gonna lock this gun because I'm worried about home invasion. Well, damn it, get a fast access safe and put it in the right location. Well, and then and we talked about this when I was up there with you guys, yeah. multiple locations, right? Like, right. well, I have a handgun vault. Cool, buy two more. <laughs> right, that's- They're small, that's they're, they're our, not that expensive. Yeah, and that's why we make small modular safes. And we use the principles of decentralized storage. Instead of having one big monster safe in your basement, my home, I've got six gun safes located in multiple locations. Part are just my collection, but in every one, I've got either like a Mossberg 500 or an AR-15, depending on the location. So I've always got one to two second access throughout my home, but nobody would know I own firearms. Really? Now, one of the things I also want to talk about, because you know, we got out ahead of this and we've had an overwhelming flood of people commenting, thanking us for what we're doing. We've also had a lot of people hitting me over the fact that we do manufacture in China. And I yeah. do. And it's a problem. And we recognize that. But I want people to understand what the dynamics are and why we're doing this. We're working hard to bring everything to America. And we've recently just moat all of our accessories now have been brought back. We're making them here. The challenge I have, we send out RFPs and RFQs to manufacturers all the time. I've got a girl that works for me, and part of her job is sourcing, finding U.S. manufacturers. We go to metal fab companies, and they reply back, we're sorry, we can't handle that workload, or we don't do that tolerance. Again, our like our Agile cabinet is a specific type of work that requires a certain level of precision and machinery. Some machine shops just don't have that equipment. That's not what they do. But the ones that can do it are telling us, we don't have the workforce. We can't take on the work. The challenge in America that people don't realize is the average press brakeman is 55 years old. The average machinist is 58. There's no kids going into trades. In 10 years, my capacity to make in America, it's disappearing. It's going to be gone. And, you know, I didn't go to college. I run the company. Most of the people that work for me did. You don't need to go to college to be successful in America. You don't. And kids and parents are being sold a bill of goods that if you don't go to college, you're an idiot, you're a loser, you're not very smart. But the kids that I know that have gone in the trades in the last 10 years live in nice houses. They drive nice cars. They're very happy. They have no debt. They're making good money. Working in the metal fabrication business is good pay. It's fun work, but think, nobody's going that's into it. So, on. I think if that's people on, are Tom, people you know, are like a little bit I'm, right, that perhaps yeah. that tide is turning where people go, oh yeah, I don't have to go to college. I mean, it, I, I think, think it is. But you're right. It for for decades it has been an attitude of like, well, you got to go to college. I mean, or else what are that's, you going to do with your life? But, to the people that are challenging, hitting me hard about, well, if it was made in America, you know what? I appreciate, I, I, I get what you're coming from, but to those people that think that way, do some research, find me a manufacturer and I'll use them. Help me out here. You no, know, <laughs> seriously. Now we just moved a chunk of our manufacturing out of China to Vietnam. Is it America? No, but it's also not China. So mm -hmm. we're, we're doing everything we can again, I disagree with what the Chinese government is all about, what they're doing. I travel to China. But prior to, I used to go to China twice a year. I've been there a lot. The workers in China aren't bad people. They're not slave labor. Uh, Shanghai produces more self-made millionaires than any city in the world. The entrepreneurial drive there is incredible. And the workers that we work with, that we said, they're not unhappy. They're making good money and they're cranking out product. But the government is on the wrong side of everything I stand for. So yes, we we do make some stuff over there because the underlying pin for me is American gun owners, first and foremost, need secure, discreet, fast access. That's what we provide. And we make it where we can right now, but we are constantly working to make it in the best places we can. And we are slowly moving out of China, I've just brought a bunch of stuff back to the U.S. We're able to take a lot of steel product and find and basically go to hard tooling 
that, that mm. makes it work. Um, it's also to be effective in home defense, it has to be affordable. I mean, I can afford, I mean, the company's successful. I can afford to buy expensive guns, expensive safes. The average American, you know, the average hardworking family, they may be living paycheck to paycheck. One of our goals is to, to, to vend your home. The product has to be affordable. And well, and also when it comes to gun safes, I mean, traditionally, I mean, even if you talk like a regular full size, big gun safe, I mean, $2,000 and, and that's tough. Not only is it tough as far as a cost goes, it's also not typically a fun purchase. It's like, it's, no. I mean, maybe once you get it and you get it organized, you're like, okay, this is nice. But like, it's kind of like buying a roof for your house. You're like, I mean, okay, great. It doesn't freaking rain inside my house, <laughs> yeah, yeah. but it's not much to brag about, it. right? But, yeah. but it's important too. And I, I appreciate that you guys are trying to keep the cost at a certain level. Tom, I, I think... Let's do it. Let's do this. Let's go to a quick commercial break. I want to talk about the training part and just see if you have any uh, a few tips or drills for people, because I know you guys have been looking at this and have yep. some specific suggestions. Have you ever bought a silencer or maybe you haven't because you're going, I don't know, it's just going to be a pain in the butt. Well, Silencer Central has kind of figured this out. They have hacked their way through the system and created a better way to buy a silencer. You just go to silencercentral.com and you can get the process started. They will make it easy. They will send you the paperwork with DocuSign. You just sign it online. It sends it back to them. Um, you just email them a picture that you need and, and the rest is really easy. They, they kind of follow the process along. They update you along the way. And of course, they have their own line of suppressors, the Banish series. And they also actually sell other people's silencers and suppressors as well. But the big deal is they make it super easy because once you start shooting suppressed, you want to put a silencer on every single gun you have. It's just it's quieter, but it also reduces recoil and does a lot of other things to help your shooting experience be more pleasurable. Go learn more at silencercentral.com. You know FN America, you know all the guns they make, but did you know they make suppressors? And they have a new one, the FN Catch-22 TI, because, you know, it's a 22 suppressor, Catch-22. TI, meaning what? Made of titanium, light, tough, versatile, Spins up to all your suppressor-ready rimfires, turning a good day on the range into an incredibly quiet blast. See what they did there? They're having fun with this. Um, it's new. It looks really cool. It has a nice finish on it. Um, rimfire is a lot. It's kind of where a lot of people start out when it comes to suppressors and silencers. So I like that they're doing this. Um, go check it out, fnamerica.com, to learn more about the whole suppressor line from FN. RangeReadyStudios.com is where you go to find out about all the classes and events we have going on here at Gun Talk headquarters. We call it Range Ready. It's our range, our classroom. Um, it's, it's a pretty cool little setup. The Colt class is going on right now. It's full. I'm sorry. <laughs> but we have pistol classes. We have Hands to Guns with Max Michelle and Steve Tarani. We have the Diagnostic Pistol Instructor. We have a reloading class. If you ever wanted to get into reloading ammunition or you want to get better at it, we have a reloading class that's brought to you by Hodgden. We have a low light class with Surefire. But go check it out, rangeReadyStudios.com, whole list of classes there. You know, this, is, this isn't Gun Talk Hunt, but I like to hunt. So we'll talk about hunting for a minute here. Remington Ammunition, when you think Remington Ammo, a lot of people think Core Locked. Core locked ammo has been the deadliest mushroom in the woods for a long time, trusted. Now it's gotten even deadlier. The core lock tipped. It's a tipped bullet, and they even have a core lock locked copper, which I love. A solid copper bullet, super durable, high weight retention, does a lot of things well. To see that, what they're doing there, they also, have, of course, have their waterfowl line and and Rimfire and all the other things that Remington is up to. Just go to Remington.com to learn more. So, Tom, I know that you're just getting started with the training aspect, mm -hmm. and you're actually putting out videos on your website and your socials to help people kind of get started and thinking about thinking about the right way to do this. Do you have, as you guys have kind of worked through and started developing this curriculum, 
Do you have any tips or maybe a drill or two that you could suggest to people to start thinking about this? Yeah, you know, this it's it comes down to the old military, slow is smooth, smooth is fast. So if you've got, regardless of how you're locking your guns, now we have fast access safes, our fast box, our fast box 20, our agile line, but even a regular safe, practice your combination, practice your access. You know, when somebody gets a fast box from us, they mount it under their bed. I have one. Every night you go to bed in the dark, reach down and by touch, very slowly, deliberately do your combination. Open the safe, you remove the firearm, put it back, close the safe, go to bed. Every night you do that for about 35 to 40 days. What you're doing, you're building muscle memory. You're going from conscious to subconscious. You're building the neural pathways so that this becomes second nature. After the 40 days, I do it about once every three or four days. And I do that. I still do that. When I open my, my closet, my front door closet, I immediately do that combination without looking. I'm, I'm very quick. I've been doing it for so long. What you're doing with that, building those neural pathways and building that repetition, just like with a draw, just like with your dry fire drills, if there is a conflict and all of a sudden your door is kicked in, boom, tunnel vision, your hands are sweating. Your ability to think is severely diminished. You got to rely on instinct. But now if you've trained for your access, slow, deliberate, smooth, that muscle memory is there. And with even in a panic, you're going to be down. You're going to do your combination smoothly. You're going to open it. And you're going to have the gun out probably in a second or two. You'd be amazed how fast people can get at this. And now you're in a position to defend yourself and your guns were secured the whole time. So to everybody listening, how often, I mean, if you're, an avid trainer, you train with your guns weekly, daily. That's great. How often do you train to get to it? And right. do you have a plan? And everybody has this, in, this is ongoing joke, Tom, that everybody has their gunfight, you know, like in their head, you know, the bad right, guy's right, going right. to do this and then I'm going to do this. And then the cops are going to come in and give me a high five. And it's like, and I, that's not how it's necessarily going to go down. Probably the, the bad guy is, Heck, it might not be a guy. It's not going to look like or feel like or, or sound like what you think it is. Or like you said, Tom, you know, you're disoriented. Um, you're, you're asleep and you wake. The only reason you know anything is going on is because your house alarm is going off and it's at 120 decibels. And now you're going, oh, sh oh sh you know, like you have to you have to train this stuff. And I'll also just throw this in there. Um, probably works for long guns as well. But this is maybe a little bit more specific to handguns. When competitive shooters are doing a stage of fire, and sometimes the stage of fire will start with the gun on a table, right? Right. If you're right-handed, they set this is like no-brainer stuff, but you, same idea for a gun safe. They set the gun down the way you would pick up the gun, so the handle is not faced the other way. the The grip right. is not faced the other way. Same thing in a gun safe, right? Don't just throw it into a gun safe and or turn the you know don't close it and then you turn the gun safe backwards as you push it under the bed or something like that. Just try to think about these things. And then the other thing I just add is, if it's a carry gun that that's your that's your only gun, then it's going to be set up like a carry gun, right? It's going to be probably a little bit smaller, not as many accessories on it. But if it is a dedicated house gun. And you mentioned an 870 or an AR, which is fantastic. I mean, right. why why use a pistol when you could use something that's far superior? And, but even if it's a pistol, then maybe it should be a full-size pistol. Maybe it should have a light on it or a laser or an optic. Mm -hmm. You know, give yourself all the cheat codes you can in this situation. So just a few things to add there. No, it's it's right. And I talk to people like with handguns. Most people use handguns. And we always talk about set your safe up, set your gun up. You always want to do it. And again, you're, when you practice access... Without thinking about it, you're always going to find yourself putting your gun in the ergonomically best way for you to access it. If you don't have a light mounted on the gun, I recommend keep a small flashlight in your safe. Keep another magazine. You know, most of the products we have will hold that. So you have the ability to grab a light if you if you need one. Mm -hmm. Again, make the tools readily available for what you may have to deal with because you don't know what the fight is going to be. And you make a great point. Everybody in their mind has their perfect fight. Mm -hmm. But you open the door and a guy immediately socks you in the eye. Right. And now you've got to get to your safe. You got one yeah. eye out. Yeah. That that's a possible scenario. But if you, if again, if you train, the reason our military crushes it because no other fighting force in the world trains as much as our military and they train for a reason. So it's second nature. So they're not, they're not in, there's no confusion 
when there's panic, because panic can set in. You can't control it. It doesn't mean you're out of the fight. It doesn't mean you're confused. It just means your adrenaline is up, you got tunnel vision, your brain is shutting down, the power is going down to your lower brain, your fight or flight mode, and you can't process. Doesn't I'd mean also, you can't. Yeah, that's that's a great point, Tom. I'd also add, um, I know that generally the gun culture is more male centric and yeah. it's very possible that the majority of people listening to this, watching this are, are, are males, they're men and they're into it and they've got the gun and they bought this gun safe. Look, if you have a wife or a loved one that lives with you, teach them this stuff too. You'd hate to be yeah. like out of town and they, they're like, well, I know where the gun safe is. I know there's a gun in there, but I don't even know the combo. Like, practice that's, together on this stuff. That, that's, that's a big one. Um, I'm guilty of that. And I wasn't even aware of it. I go, holy cow. So we've made some changes, but you know, it's, it's my opinion. You know, I'm new to the training thing. I'm not a trainer. You know, my expertise in this whole field stops the minute the gun is in your hand. And I don't, I don't, I don't I mean, that's not my skill set. My skill set is storage, but we're trying we're working now with the training community to get trainers to incorporate access. We want to work with the NRA, with a lot of the groups to consider access as part of the training because we think it'll make America safer, better prepared. But women shooters are one of the fastest growing groups. And in my opinion, from what I've seen, when people go through training, especially basic firearms training, it's the women that practice the most. Yeah. And it's also uh, women. One of the first questions they'll ask, whether they're considering getting a gun or they just got a gun, is how do I store this safely? Yeah. They're, they're, yep. They're they're smarter than us generally, Tom. <laughs> well, they think they they think a little farther ahead in, sometimes, and also they don't have the perfect gunfight in the back of their head. They yeah, have not watched enough westerns. They're more realistic, know? yeah. That's well, right. Tom, thanks for being on with us. If people want to learn more about what you guys are up to, what's the best way to find find you guys? Uh, you know, the website securegunstorage.com. Google secure it. We're all over social media. Check out our YouTube channel, um, Twitter. Follow us on Twitter. Um, we're posting, we're putting out a lot of information right now and it's being very well received. Our YouTube channel, we're going to have a lot of videos coming out about the training and all these things that you can do. Again, yeah, we sell safes, but our goal is to make America safer and better prepared. I love it. Thanks for being on with us, man. It's good to see you. All right, man. Thank you very much.